Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to be touching base on my Xenomorphs. I got a few McFarlane figures, but I got a whole bunch of NECA figures based on the Xenomorphs. Because they are, in fact, when it comes to the sci-fi types of horror, they are my favorite franchise in that aspect, and I like to collect them. Plus they're a little bit cheaper than the Predators, okay? I do have <clears throat> something like um, eight different Predators, I believe. I don't collect a whole bunch of them because they are a little bit more pricier, but they're much more elaborate in design as well. And there's some really cool ones out there. But my all-time favorite Predator, for, not, yeah, the Predator, um, is in fact a wolf Predator from uh, Alien vs. Uh, Predator Requiem. He is absolutely badass. There is a bust that someone, that a company made. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but anyway, it's totally elaborate, totally ridiculous ridiculously beautiful looking colors on this thing absolutely amazing looking piece it is now almost a thousand dollars for that bust if I had the money I'd love to pick that up because it's based on the wolf predator looks absolutely amazing but long story short let's get into the xenomorphs okay and some people call them xenomorphs that's traditionally what they're called is xenomorphs but I've heard people call them xenomorph and they got a unique sound to them that's why I like to call them xenomorphs okay now, before we get into this, I will say something. I'm not 100% familiar with them, so if I make a mistake along the lines, please forgive me. Because, um, like I said, I collected these a long time ago, so I'm not, you know, 100% familiar with everything. But if I do make a mistake and you feel like you need to comment and correct me, that's fine. Just be nice about it. Don't be rude. If I feel it's rude or condescending anyway, then honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the comment. So just keep that in mind. But if you know I made a mistake, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer you back on that. And I do appreciate it if you go out of your way to do that for me. But like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with these. I'm trying to do the best that I can because I got these a long time ago. So with this in mind, let's start off with the fact that, like I said, I got over 30 of these particular figures possibly. Or anything that's based on the Alien franchise. So I'm going to break them down into smaller videos. If I try to upload them in one separate video. I don't honestly think it's going to work out. Because it would be over an hour long. Because I like to talk about these figures as you already see. Alright. Uh, so with that in mind I'm going to break them down in smaller vi uh, videos. Because I tried to do it one time. And I think it was. I can't remember what video it was. But I, it was uploading. And. Honestly, it uploaded in standard, but I couldn't get it in high definition. It disconnected for some reason. So I'm assuming maybe it's because the file size was too big and it just took forever. So I'm going to break them down in smaller videos. So keep that in mind, guys, okay? Let's start off with the very first one here. This one is called The Defiance Alien. It is not in any of the movies, okay? There is a total of, technically, five alien movies. Well, actually six. Um, Prometheus is uh, not a technically a xenomorph type movie it's, um, but it does have a gigantic trilobite or what do they call them they call them a face hugger and it got a hold of one of the um, I forgot what they called Ex explorers or something but anyway the big dudes that you see in the movie I haven't seen the movie in a while I thought it was a pretty cool movie but anyway they are connected to the alien franchise in that way face hugger wise and that's where I think we got the first actual um, embryo type, alien type situation going on. And I believe it was called a deacon, I think. <clears throat> but anyway, it's connected to the alien franchise. There is a total of six movies. Rumor has it they are coming out with yet another one. And it's going to bring back Sigourney Weaver as well as the... Um, Michael Bean and probably some other characters as well. I'm not sure how they're going to do this or how, how they're going to handle it. We know that the Alien franchise along with the Predator franchise is now Disney owned. There is no telling what they will do with that franchise or what they will do with that movie. Because they are very, how can I say, they're kind of family oriented. So they might tone it down a bit. So it might not come off as serious as the older movies. Because obviously Fox in itself is not family oriented in that way when they made the movies. So with that in mind, you never know how, how they're going to do it. They might do a good job. Who knows? But anyway, 
Uh, I heard rumors that they're actually going to be coming out with a new Alien movie. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut off the turntable and show you the Defiance Alien up close and personal. So let me pull this back here. Shut that off. And bring him down. All right. First thing I notice about this, it is a very unique design. It is not like most um, xenomorphs uh, or xenomorphs, whatever you want to call them. The, the actual crest on this is very Praetorian-like, okay? Almost Queen-esque-like, except towards the back end, her, her crest is gigantic, okay? Uh, but this one's very Praetorian-like, and when I seen this in the clamshell, it's like, ooh, I gotta have that. I love the design of that. And as you can see, the mouth in itself, all right, very queen-like. It doesn't have a secondary mouth in it. I don't see it unless that's right there. You see the tongue could possibly be that secondary mouth unless it's stuck way up there in the roof. No, it's not. Or is it? Anyway, there seems to be a secondary mouth up in there. Let me pull it up close here so you can see it. Get that hand out of the way. We'll be all right. Hang on for a second here, guys. There. Do you see it? Okay. Get my hand out of the way so you can see it. Looks like there is a secondary mouth, but it does not extend, I don't believe, unless we have to reach inside and grab it. But anyway, let's look at the design. Now, I have some other figures. Let me grab this here. That have this tube-like thing here. As you can see, it's loose. Okay? They do come out in some of them. Okay? Now, the actual tubes in the back are very traditional to the XX121, which is the very first alien known as the big chap from the 1979 movie so the tubes are very similar to him except i think his, his are more a little bit straighter and some of these uh, xenomorphs as time progressed and the way they made them they're a lot different okay but the actual design is very hr giger like they still got the biomechanical texture to it now the um, the actual xenomorph in alien covenant not so much it was very smooth like all right, look at the back of that. That's cool looking. The crest. Okay. Now, the actual um, articulation of these figures are all pretty much the same. Maybe with some few exceptions, but they do have the XX121 body frame. And most of the xenomorphs you're going to see here. Okay. Uh, with the exception of maybe their hands and stuff like that. And there are some other xenomorphs that are a little bit different, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, and then these do bend. As you can see, they clicky clicky. Got very cool texture to it. Okay, hang on for a second here. Go to sleep. As that dragon speak, you gotta, you gotta shut it down. Otherwise, it'll start moving pages around on you. All right, but that's what that looks like. Now the tail is very cool looking. It's very long. I like that tail. Okay, and he's got a very slim body, like I said. Most of the uh, xenomorph uh, uh, bodies will look pretty much the same, okay? All right, so enough about this guy here. This is the Defiance Alien, all right? He's very cool looking, all right? Now, he's based on the comic book series. He's not in any of the movies, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, there is a distinct possibility. I'm not 100% positive. But I heard that he's possibly in one of the video games. Not sure which one it is. But um, that's what I heard. But like I said, if I made a mistake, just let me know, guys, okay? Let me bring out my McFarlane version, which is very unique in its own way. This is an alien warrior. <coughs> there we go. Let's get that thing to stand. Hope the door fall. Okay, now we'll move that in a little bit. Okay, now as you can see, I hope the battery holds up here. But anyway, because sometimes the batteries on these camcorders, oops, don't last very long. Okay. But anyway, this is the McFarlane figure based on the. All right, I'm gonna shut that off. Okay, hang on for a second, guys. We're not even going to put them on the stand. I'll just show you them, okay? Okay, this is uh, McFarlane's version of the Alien Warrior, possibly from the second movie. I'm not positively sure, but it's not in the first movie. 
right? As you can see the color scheme and everything, McFarlane really does an amazing job on their details. They are superior to NECA figures when it comes to details. Mezco does another amazing job, but they are pretty pricey, okay? Even McFarlane toys in their own right have gotten pretty pricey. Everything today has gotten pricey. They don't ever seem to go down in price. They always seem to go up. Like the uh, new Michael Myers uh, from uh, Halloween Kills, Trick or Treat Studios, just made the actual mask based on uh, the burnt effect of uh, the mask. And it's traditionally now more expensive than your standard Michael Myers masks. Usually they run around 60 bucks, $10 shipping and handling. You'll get it about 70 bucks. Not this one on Amazon. It's like $79 for that mask, okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to pay that kind of money for a mask. I'm not going to do it. Because I don't think Trick or Treat Studios in themselves, while they're good, but they're not that amazing that you can charge 80 bucks for their masks okay no offense okay but this is the xenomorph he's an alien warrior as you can see his hands are curled up a very cool looking design on this thing okay the hips very cool the tail is so as you can see it's got a spear like thing going on in the back here the legs are different okay almost like the dog runner or the um, alien from part three. I do have uh, a genocide version of the dog runner or the alien three. I want to get the actual authentic uh, version of the dog runner, but they're still a little too pricey for me and they're kind of on the rare side, right? Because of that. But anyway, the tubes on the back are very different than that of, you know, your standard one. These are very long in nature. It's just the way McFarland did it, okay? And the head. Now, the articulation on McFarland figures are a lot different, okay? They're different than the NECA figures. Now, I don't know how many points of articulation there is, but it does move at the shoulders. And as well as the elbows and the hands, obviously, okay? Yeah. does move at the torso here move it sideways here just up and down it doesn't move side to side okay it's not recommended otherwise you'll snap it if you have one of these it's got these nice little hip hip pocket things I don't know what you want to call them but they're flexible okay legs they do move back and forth okay now through here no articulation okay it's all solid piece the feet do move. They swing back and forth, but they're tight. Hang on. As you can see, it's got a hinge in it. They don't swing this way, but they will swing up and down. Okay? So keep that in mind. And that is my Alien Warrior. I believe it's from the second movie. I could be wrong. I'm not sure how they treated it. Like I said, I've collected these a long time ago, so I'm not really sure. But it is a McFarlane figure, so keep that in mind. Now, the mouth in itself does not move as you can see okay so give you a close-up shot of the mouth right, let's get that shadow out of the way a very cool design on this thing and I love the color scheme too all right okay that's the McFarlane figure based on the xenomorph I'm not sure maybe the second movie or just a generalized alien warrior okay <clears throat> it's standing on its own. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to get into this one here. This one is completely different too. And a different color than what you would normally see. Okay, now most of you already know what this one is. <clears throat> this is from the arcade game. I think it came out in 1995. I'm not positively sure. But they actually made a figure based on the video arcade game. Okay. So I liked it and I picked it up. I said, okay, let's just do a video on it. Now keep in mind, most of the videos that I've done on these particular figures are sitting on my other channel. It's called Giant Monsters and Beyond. Um, I could leave a link down below if you want to check out that site. It's nothing but sci-fi, Godzilla, anything monster related, horror related, it's on there. I decided to create this channel because of the Halloween slash horror effects. 
because I'm a big, big fan of horror and a big fan of Halloween, so I wanted a separate channel from that. And obviously the other uh, videos on there are mostly giant monsters, so keep that in mind. They're not so much horror, but there are some horror on that channel. But anyway, this is the um, uh, video game version, the arcade game version of it, okay? Again, the tubes are very similar. Now, this one here is permanent, as you can see. You can't move it. The head is very Praetorian-like, okay? It's very similar to the Defender, a uh, Defender, Defiance Alien, except the Defiance Alien is much more pronounced and wider. But this one's almost similar to it, as you can see, okay? It's got cool colors, too. Purple and pink. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Articulation-wise, the torso does move, as you can see here. The head moves from side to side. Okay, it's on a ball joint. All right. Obviously, the arms move and the legs move and the tail is flexible. Okay. But that is my video arcade uh, version of the Xenomorph. Okay. <laughs> now, let's check out the mouth. All right, it does open, okay. All right, so. Let's see if I reach in and grab that secondary mouth. Well, as you can see, it's very similar to the Defiance Alien. Can't reach in there and grab it and pull it out, but there is a secondary set of t um, mouth in there, okay? Enough about him. Make sure these guys stand properly so they don't fall. Because if they fall, they'll end up breaking on me. Okay. Hang on, let me pull the arms down. All right, we're good. Now, moving on to this guy here. These guys like to get snagged up in each other. This guy is hard to stand. I'm going to put him on the turntable. As you can see, he's hard to stand. You don't want to stand. Okay. This is, in fact, the Praying Mantis Alien. Now, it is not based on anything movie-related, obviously. It is in a comic book series very similar to the Defiance Alien. They come from the comic books, okay? But this guy here, when I seen it at the uh, comic book store, I said to myself, that is cool looking because the color is what really caught me. It has a uh, gray and kind of like grassy lime green, not lime green, but a little darker than lime green colors. And it really stood out for me, so... When I brought it home, I took it out, and I was like, oh, crap, that thing is cool looking. And it's got a lot of pointy things about him, too, okay, which I'll show you here in a second. But anyway, long story short, let me move these out of the way here, because so I don't knock them over. I'm going to show you what he looks like up close and personal. Take a drink of coffee. All right. Shut it down. Pull it back. Now, like I said, this thing is very hard to stand. The arms in themselves have many, many articulated parts. Okay? As you can see, he's very pointy. Okay? And it's a little loose, so that's why he's hard to stand. Okay? It does move at the shoulders here. Okay? The torso, sorry about the camera, does move. Okay? Now, one thing I notice about this here is the head. All right. I'm not sure about that. Maybe that's a secondary mouth that comes out. Yeah, I think it does. But, but anyway, you see the secondary mouth right there. It does come out. But come out. There it is. There it is. Okay. As you can see. Again, the crest is very Praetorian-like, but this is much more pronounced. Not wide, and not as, I don't know, kingly. You know, really cool looking. Uh, these are cool, don't get me wrong, but they're not as wide and as intimidating as the Praetorians or the Queen. Okay? Shoulder blades. Okay? Okay? Crazy cool. Okay? There's a lot of pointy stuff about this one here. Okay, it's a good thing it's a soft plastic, because otherwise you'd, your hands would be all cut up. Here's the tail, okay? And it's got a 
pointer, I think. Tsk, ah! Okay. Or not so much articulation there, but like I said, the legs do move at the hips here. Okay, as well as at the kneecaps and these tripod type like feet, which is cool. Alright. But that is the praying mantis xenomorph or the alien as they call it. Okay, let me show you the chest on this thing. Again, very similar to the XX121 in some aspects, okay? But that is push him back up in there and close the mouth. Now the mouth is really different. It's got fangs on it. So you can see. Where he's just very teethy. Let me say, yeah, he's teethy. He's very similar to the queen. Okay. All right. But anyway, that is the praying mantis alien. All right. So I'm gonna leave him lay there, and now we are going to move on to the genocide versions of the xenomorphs. Okay. This is the big chap version. Okay. And I'll show you my original. The one that literally took me six months to get. I kid you not. As long as that don't fall. Okay. Well, there. There we go. All right. This here is the big chap, the XX121, but it's the genocide version based on the comic books, not on any kind of movie or anything like that. But you can see it's got very similar body styles, and I do have the original. Like I said, it took literally six months for Big Bad Toy Store to get the pre-order in because it kept on going on back order. And I was like, okay, I'll wait for the thing. It's well worth it. So I waited six months for this thing. And it finally came in. To me, it was worth the wait, in my opinion. I could have went out and bought it. But I wasn't in a rush for it because I already had a bunch of them. But anyway, I'm going to show you what this thing looks like up close and personal. And then we're going to get into the other genocide version which is the dog alien or the dog runner, okay? So, let's shut that down. Okay, I apologize about the interruption. The battery decided to die on me, so I plugged it in directly. So we're not going to have no more problems with this camera dying on me. The batteries don't last long on these things for some reason. I got two of them, and at the most, they probably last like an hour, hour and a half, and then you just die. So I kept it plugged in, so that's what we're going to keep doing, okay? I think it's a lot easier, so I don't <laughs> get these interruptions. But anyway, this is Big Chap, the genocide version, okay? Obviously, the articulation is the, the same as any of the other ones. All right, this secondary piece right here is solid, so you don't have to worry about it coming off. Okay? Now, let me open up the mouth here. Let me see what that looks like inside. Yeah, there is a secondary mouth in there. But I'm not going to pull it out, but I'm going to show you what it looks like here. Let me pull the hands out of the way here. Alright, now you see the secondary mouth in there? Okay, I just got to reach in with a pair of needle nose and pull it out, but I'm not going to bother with it. It's got a very cool color scheme. Black, a little bit of gray, and obviously red. It's very cool. Again, biomechanical, very H.R. Giger. The original design is H.R. Giger. All right. And they slowly got away from that using their own design. Torso does move. Same with the hips and the legs. It's all pretty much the same. Okay. The feet are different on this one because it's the original design. Okay. And they do swing ever so slightly because of the leg back and forth this way. But they're only supposed to move up and down. Okay tail is very short okay the hands are what's different the other xenomorphs as your time progresses obviously their hands change okay now the next thing I'm going to show you here is the actual original big chap which is a very cool looking design the one I waited six months for we're going to get into that right now here let me just get him all stood up here all right, hang on. Hang on, this thing's being difficult. There we go. All right, now, with this guy here, this is my big chap, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him up on a pedestal, 
so you can see what he looks like all right and then we'll move the camera in a little bit there we go so you can get a good idea what he looks like and then we're going to get into the other genocide version which is very cool looking he is very dog alien like and I'll show you that last and then I'm going to end this video and then eventually I'll grab a bunch more of the uh, xenomorphs and we'll do another video separate to that okay so this right here is the actual dog alien hey what's going on with my mouse here oh that that helps okay let me shut these things down here real quick all right okay this is big chap xx121 originally in the 1979 movie did not have a name for this particular alien it was just simply called uh, according to the studio and behind the scenes they called him big chap but he didn't have a technical name that is until 1986 when the aliens movie came out uh, the James Cameron version they decided to go ahead and give him a name and that's what they call them the XX121 so with this in mind I'm gonna shut this down and show you what it looks like up close I'm gonna show you the differences between the two of them which they're not really technically that much different now one thing I want to show you about this one here and you can't really see it on this one here unfortunately is the fact that when you look at the crest okay this one here is colored different you would technically see a skull right here in the front part of the crest but they didn't do that here for some reason okay but that's technically what uh, the original XX121 had was an actual skull you can see the face right here in the front part but the way they colored it here obviously you're not going to see that but I do have the SH Monster Arts version which you'll see in another video it will show you that so keep that in mind so let me show you the differences between the two of these guys here all right, all right so let me do one thing first open up his mouth there we go <laughs> see that <laughs> okay now as you can see they're not really much different the genocide version is slightly different in the cheek uh, mouth right there as you can see let me get my finger up there. Now, right in here in this area here is a little deformed as compared. No, actually, it's the same, okay? It just looks the same. Okay, they're the same body molds. It's just different paint schemes. Okay, yeah, they are exactly the same. Okay? All right. All right, that's what they are, so we know that they're the same, so. Same exact um, body mold. They just got a different paint scheme to them, that's all. All right. But anyway. I've been waiting six months for this thing, and I finally got it. Again, the body style, XX121. Obviously, it's the original, big chap, okay? The tail, very flexible. It's got a little bendy wire in it, okay? The tubes, as you can see here, very similar to the uh, Defiance Alien here. Let me pull him out. Let me find him right there. All right. All right. Now, you can see they're similar, okay? All right, they didn't change that much in that aspect, okay? Uh, hang on, did you see it? Yeah, I can tell. Okay. All right, enough about that. This is my big chap, and I'm going to show you the genocide dog uh, alien here in a second, and then we're going to end this video. Okay, and that's what she looks like up close and personal. They are very cool-looking designs. NECA does a fantastic job on the details, though in my opinion, when it comes to... Um, um, McFarlane, they're synonymous when it comes to their details. Because I got a Frankenstein figure that is ridiculously, ridiculously detailed in every aspect. It is very cool looking. But they are a bit pricey, that's for sure. Alright, that is my big chap. Okay, from the very first movie, the 1979 movie. Okay, alright, enough about him. Lay him down. Now we're going to move into the dog alien. The genocide version. Now, I don't have the original because, like I said, they're a little more expensive. And they got a really cool one. I hope this thing will go around. Maybe not. There we go. I hope that tail don't hit it. Uh, hang on. We'll see if it clears. There we go. 
All right. Reposition you. Okay, sorry about all this repositioning stuff. But I wanted to show you what it actually looks like here. The dog alien in it, the dog alien in itself is one of the coolest xenomorphs in the movie franchise, okay? This is not part of the franchise movies. Uh, it's actually based on the comic book series along with the other big chap that I showed you. Um, they're called genocide versions. Uh, they go against, I guess, the standard uh, xenomorphs. They got a red queen alien. The whole nine yards in the, um, in the comic book series. But anyway, uh, the actual dog alien in part three uh, is very cool looking. Like I said, I like to get a hold of one of them. But he is probably the fastest one of the bunch, okay? Because he's extremely fast. He comes from a dog. And I think in the theatrical version, he came from a cow. So, I don't know why they did that. It didn't make any sense. But anyway. Uh, but he is a very cool looking. He's got a very smooth looking dome, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And the biomechanical nature of the suit, or in this case the design, is also very cool looking. Alright, so what I'm going to do is shut this down here bring him he's got an extremely extremely long tail okay so let me pull you back in position here we got a tail see that and he does use this he impales people okay this thing's cool in the movie anyway not in the comic books I don't I didn't read the comic books so I really don't know what he does in that okay the hands are a little bit different, okay. Again, biomechanical nature in the rib section, as well as the head. It's very similar to the big chap, okay. The mouth does not open, okay. Okay, no, it don't, okay. But that's what that looks like. Now, you can position this thing, you can literally get it standing up. But I choose to keep it in a crouch position because it looks cool, okay? But anyway, that is my dog Alien from the Genocide comic book series. Alright. Alright, I'm going to show you one more thing and then I'm going to end this video. Well, actually, let's just take him, lay him down. I'm going to show you a face hugger that is actually technically a queen face hugger. Okay. That's what that is, okay? Very similar color scheme. You only see this in the deleted scene in part three where uh, one of the, I guess, the prisoners or something or guards literally pick up one of the uh, face huggers and them things are absolutely huge. Apparently, it uh, impregnated uh, Sigourney Weaver's character and obviously towards the end, he j she jumps over and kills herself, taking the queen with her. And she was, in fact, a queen, okay? And that's what these are. These are face huggers based on the queen, and they can only impregnate you with a queen, okay? I do have a bigger one. I'll show you that probably in the next video, okay? And that's a little bit more detail. All right, but enough about that, okay? I'm going to put Mr. Big Chap up on the turntable, and then I'm going to end this video, Okay? Day. Okay. All right, guys. Oh, ooh, good thing for that tail. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right, that right there is Big Chap, as we know. Okay. Now I will concentrate on getting something better for the background. Because obviously this board here works great, with the exception that it's too damn small. As you can see, I can kind of drift over here and you can see part of the kitchen. Okay, we don't want that, okay? I do definitely want to concentrate on doing something with that, okay? Alright, here we go. Anyway, you get the idea. I definitely will concentrate on that, okay? Maybe this way, there we go. Actually, no, see, like I said, I gotta get me a bigger board or something. Maybe I might just uh, end up creating a gigantic backdrop and just pushing it against the table, and then I can take it from there. But anyway, 
I'm going to go ahead and end it here. This is uh, the first part of my Xenomorph collection. Like I said, I got a little bit over 30 of them, and it will take some time to get through and take a couple of videos to get through them. And like I said, if I made any mistakes, just let me know in the comment section below. We'd greatly appreciate that. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I'm going to be still concentrating on the rest of my horror figures. And as right now, it's August, and we're just around the corner for some uh, serious walkthroughs because Spirit Halloween is going to start opening up here in the next week or so, hopefully. And we'll do some walkthroughs. And eventually, as financially, when things get situated here, I'm going to buy some more masks. Okay, I like masks. So I will be concentrating on that. Also, I will be concentrating on yet another video based on Michael Myers. I, I did order the actual Jamie mask from Part 4. She, she's the little girl. She's um, Danielle Harris. She wears the, uh, the little face mask. I did order that. And that's coming through through Big Bad Toy Story. It should be here in a couple of days. I'll do a video on that as well. Okay. But uh, as for the uh, new Michael Myers mask. Uh, the Halloween Kills. They suddenly decided to go ahead and jack up that price. Normally you can get those masks for $60. With maybe $10 shipping and handling. And it'd run around seventy bucks, okay? Not this time. It's about eighty bucks now. They they they, what they did is they add ten dollars to the mask, okay? It's not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing when you keep jacking up the prices. People are gonna stop buying these things because they're just you know. Don't get me wrong about Trick or Street Studios. Some of their masks look absolutely amazing, and they're okay quality wise. They're really decent for the most part. But they're not top-notch like Don Posts or any of those other kind of masks where you're willing to sink a little, a lot of money into them. A lot of people will buy the Trick or Treat Studios mask, take a look at them and say, I don't like the looks of it. And they'll turn around and get them repainted, okay? Uh, that's because they're not top quality and they're no offense, but uh, they're definitely not worth keep jacking the prices up on, okay? Not, not to, trying to criticize them, but they are just a typical mask company that went... Uh, public on it more or less uh, so they mass produce their products and there are a lot of times they're hit and miss when they come out so to actually jack up the price on the Michael Myers mask I didn't agree with that but it is what it is I guess they just keep trying to make themselves some profits there which don't get me wrong okay I'm not trying to criticize them totally people love their masks I'm going to still be collecting masks there is ghoulish productions rubies Ruby's is hit and miss when it comes to their quality and stuff, and they got a lot of defects in their masks. I have a Herman Munster mask that had a defect that literally didn't paint the eye. And I'm like, what? What the hell? They're mass produced, so I had to repaint the eye. And it looks all right now, so I, I kind of touched it up the other night. But, but long story short, that mask there, <clears throat> I'm going to wait for it to drop in price, hopefully. Uh, because it's a new mask, I think that's probably why they're doing it. They're trying to capitalize on profits, okay? Now, there is a, a website that actually sells it for a little bit cheaper. It's $69, I think it is, without the shipping and handling, technically. That's a little bit cheaper. But if you're going to buy that mask, it's going to run you around 80 bucks. okay? I can promise you that. All right. So keep that in mind. But anyway, this is my first collection of my Xenomorphs so far. I will be concentrating on yet... Um, Another one here probably tomorrow. It depends on how I feel. But anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I'm going to be pushing out some more videos. In the meantime, this is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day.